In this video and the next one, I'm going to talk about how anthropogenic climate change has slowed agricultural productivity growth. Now, this is not in the future. It's already happened. I'll talk about a paper that was just published in the last few days, and it uses what's called an econometric model of weather effects on global, global ab agricultural total food productivity. So they use the acronym TFP for total food productivity. So remember that acronym. Basically, they've looked um, at data from 1961 to, 20, to, to, to the present. Um, and agricultural research, you know, technological innovation has obviously led to large food productivity growth. But anthropogenic climate change has um, decreased the food productivity significantly. So the, the main result of this paper is that anthropogenic climate change, and they call it ACC, so I might use that acronym as well, it's reduced global agricultural TFP, which is a total factor productivity, and I'll define what that is shortly, by 21% since 1961. This is essentially equivalent to losing the last seven years of productivity growth, so about 3% loss per, per, per year on average. In warmer regions like Africa, Latin America, and the Caribbean, the reduction since 1961 is 26 to 34%. Also, by comparing, by dividing that interval 1961 to 2020 into two intervals, the earlier one and the latter one, they show that global agriculture has grown more vulnerable to ongoing climate change. So if you take the first period since 1961, okay, then um, it's about a 10% reduction in the total food productivity. And if you take the second period, it's about a 30% reduction. So you take the average of those two periods and it's a 21% reduction since 1961. And of course, you know, food research has boosted productivity, but that's distributed unequally across the planet. So it is definitely, and it's definitely slowing in certain regions. Now, anthropogenic climate change, you know, has increased the global average temperature, according to this paper, over the last 150 years, 1.5 centuries, by, it just says, greater than about one degrees Celsius. And we saw a number recently, 1.25 degrees Celsius for 2020's um, temperature above the, in quotes, pre-industrial. And again, you know, 150 years ago, that was mentioned in this paper, brings you to 1870. So I think they're using either the 1850 to 1900 baseline or the 1880 to 1900 baseline, or 1910 baseline, rather, they're not using the original 1750 um, time year for the, you know, start of the Industrial Revolution. So, you know, like I say, paper after paper, they give this number, they just say since the industrial re beginning of the Industrial Revolution, they really need to define the year, the average, the year that, that they're talking about, uh, because otherwise it's, it's meaningless. And we know about the baseline shifts. Now, we also know it's pretty clear that extreme weather events are stressing agriculture. You know, how much and, you know, look, look, we're looking at today. Okay, most studies focus on future impacts. Now, I have a little um, guest appearance here from this guy who's been uh, sitting on my lap and he's been scratching me a bit. And, uh, you know, he's very interested in what I'm doing. So hopefully he stays on my lap for the duration but he just wanted to say hello. Okay, uh, Shackleton the Explorer. He's peacefully on my lap thinking he'll get treats soon. Okay, so let me continue. So the paper name is actually Anthropogenic Climate Change Has Slowed Indust Agricultural Productivity Growth. Okay, so 
most research to date on the historical impacts of anthropogenic climate change, they focus on the major cereal crop yields or the ag total agricultural GDP. And then they, you know, take that as a percentage of total GDP. The problem is, as I'll show you, okay, so the next video, this video is just chatting. And the next video, I'm going to show you all the figures from the paper, and that will confirm everything that I'm talking about in this video. But basically, the problem is that cereal crops are only about 20% of agriculture's global net pr productivity or production value. Variations in yield could deviate from the overall productivity numbers if farmers ad adjust the inputs in response to weather. So in very bad weather years, they plant a lot less. So of course, the, the yields are going to be much lower. And the uh, net... Uh, the, the um, total factor productivity, the TFP, depends on the outputs from agriculture minus the inputs. Okay, so if the, out, the outputs are going down, but the inputs are also going down, then that won't reduce the factor as, as much. So I'll talk more about that. Um, also, growth and levels of total and agricultural GDP are diverging in most countries. So all impacts, um, you know, anthropogenic climate change, of course, it impacts both total GDP and agricultural GDP. So this study looks at the TFP, total factor productivity, which is not the crop yield or the GDP output. And most people don't do that. The TFP, it measures the aggregate output per unit input of measured, per unit input of measured aggregate input. So it measures basically inputs, outputs minus inputs to farming. The aggregate output is crops and livestock. Now we're not talking about the oceans here, we're just talking about terrestrial, land-based agriculture. Okay, this study should be repeated for the oceans. The aggregate inputs are labor, land, physical capital, and materials. So the production is equal to the effects of weather factor times the technical knowledge or technical um, uh, amount of um, resources. Uh, you know, what technology do you have to incre increase production yields in farming? Times the observed aggregate inputs times, and there's some unobserved aggregate inputs that need to be teased out from the statistics. Now, this is done for each country for each year, okay? So the aggregate is then summed over all of the countries for each given year, okay? Now the percentage change in this TFP factor, total factor productivity, is the aggregate input output minus, the aggregate output minus the observed um, aggregate input and so that'll be the change in technology plus the the, the weather factor plus the uh, the unobserved in the unobserved inputs etc okay so there's a bit of statistics involved now the key findings of this paper are that basically two graphs so one graph is the tfp agricultural total factor productivity okay just give me a second yeah, so total factor productivity on the y-axis, and the, av uh, the, the average green season temperature, if you like, on the x-axis, and it varies from, say, there, it's on a scale from, for, from 5 to 30 degrees Celsius on the x-axis. So different countries fit in in different locations, but what you see is as temperature increases, the, the uh, total factor productivity growth decreases. Okay, so when the warming is detrimental to the agriculture, and it's almost, it's almost linear, okay? Um, and if you do the same plot against the precipitation around the, you know, so the precipitation is on the x-axis now, zero to a thousand millimeters annual rainfall during the green season, or, or uh, yeah, so if you look at the total fact, uh, TFP, 
the total factor productivity growth of agriculture, you see it actually rises up and then peaks and then comes down and it peaks at about 500 millimeters. So it's a nonlinear curve. Now, a lot of factors were looked at and 1962 to 1988, the first period was compared to the second period, 1989 to, to, to 2015, and then that was extrapolated up a bit to 2020, then you see that the temperature response function, uh, the effect of um, temperature, rising temperatures on agriculture, it, it dominates. It's much steeper downward in more recent years. Um, agriculture is becoming more sensitive to climate extremes, and this is mostly temperature and precipitation. It's not individual extreme weather events, like massive hailstorm can destroy huge numbers of crops and cause billions of damage to cornfields or whatever. You know, those things are not um, incorporated directly, but the, the, this model looks at the overall country, okay? So that would be, it would be very, it would be within the data, one particular extreme weather event. Um, okay, so the, the next thing is that, uh, yeah, so, so weather shocks and cumulative weather effects on TFP growth um, are things that they're continuing to look at. Um, but they, they did look at data from the, the CMIP-6 climate models that will go in the next IPCC report. And they found that uh, the, they looked at climate effects with and without a anthropogenic climate change to derive the cumulative impact to tease out the effect of the anthropogenic climate change in each country since 1961. And then they summed it all up to get the global average amount. And they found that the anthropogenic climate change effect on global TFP, total factor productivity growth, so agriculture growth from 1961 to 2020 was a was down 20.8%, okay? So basically, if climate change, if anthropogenic climate change had not occurred and the system was stable, then through uh, farming research and technology and improvement methods, if, you, if it was pegged at nominally 100, the, the unit, the TFP measurement in 1961, then it's gone up to 190 um, with anthropogenic climate change. In, so, in 20, that, so in 2020, the number is 190. In 1961, it was 100. Without anthropogenic climate change, the model showed that the TFP would have been 210. So that's where you get, you know, it, 20, 20 points has been nicked off it by climate change. So, so with respect to 1960, the effect of climate change has reduced the growth of agricultural productivity by by 20%, okay? And if you take the curve with climate change and extend it out in a horizontal line, it's basically, uh, it hits the curve where there wouldn't have been climate change uh, seven years ago. So basically, the um, climate effect of climate change, it's knocked seven years of productivity growth off agriculture. And this is, they call this the baseline model. They tried hundreds of other models. They tried a two-season model. They, they, they modeled everything for, for, uh, for example, three months of green and three months of brown, like drier months. They, they looked at, 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 at three different latitudinal groups. They looked at it, um, they looked at 288 different models. Um, the mean impact was 16.9% drop, okay, and uh, that was with a standard deviation of 5.9%. They excluded certain large countries like China, USA, India, and Brazil in some models, and they found there wasn't much change in the result. They took out the 10% of the coldest or hottest countries, or 20% of the hottest and coldest countries, um, the 10% the, the or 20% of the smallest countries, they, 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 they used all these variations in their models and they found that nothing substantially altered the baseline finding. Okay. Okay. So, uh, but the latter half is much more serious. The latter interval is much more serious than the earlier interval. Uh, thank you for listening and uh, 
Have a good day.